my goodness, I smacked my forehead so hard when I realized what I, this is, this is garbage code. This doesn't make any sort of sense. Uh, no wonder folks were so confused. Uh, conceptually, when we were explaining uh, how the deck uh, gets cut in half and interlaced, everyone was understanding that. But when I switched to the programming aspect, people were sure confused. And I don't blame them, because look at what you get. This, this is, this nested loop approach, uh, so this is a copy over to a duplicate array and then copy um, and then shuffle the duplicate array into uh, values. This is, this is, uh, the reason why I was confused is because um, I ended last year teaching uh, the students about different types of ways to navigate and, and uh, sort um, arrays. So if you're trying to sort your own um, list of numbers, um, then the, then oftentimes you use the nested loop structure. And so that's why I reached for it. Uh, and I just didn't catch myself that this doesn't make any sense. And let me explain why. First, as apology, here's an otter eating. It's adorable. Okay, behold my idiocy. So here's here's what I was honest to goodness expecting, um, and, and I can link uh, the original video that's uh, so incorrect. What I was trying to do, and what I was trying to explain in class, is that this loop right here would loop from uh, here to here, so from zero to one half, and then the inner loop, meanwhile, would go uh, from zero to the end. So all the way to the end, but it would go up by twos. Okay, good thought. However, Mr. Ray, that doesn't work at all. Why, you ask? Because it's a nested loop, this will start at zero, yes, but then before it goes on to one, this will run its whole loop. So it'll first go to zero, yes, and copy 55 over. But then it's going to go up to shuffled two. And at shuffled two, it's going to copy 55 again because x hasn't gone up yet. We're still, x is still zero and we're executing the whole loop. So x is still zero, so 55 would also go right here. So this would become 55 as well. And then so would this. And then uh, uh, x would go up to one. And I'd do it all over again, replacing this, this, this. I have now lost 55 from the shuffled array. So this is a terrible, terrible solution. This does not work. Again, I was getting it crossed in my head. Goodness knows why. It was the end of the day. And then I stuck with it for the, the day after anyway. So this is uh, emblematic of a... A thing that we'll learn learn at the end of the year how to sort our own arrays instead of just uh, using built-in Java tools to sort it for us. But to, in order to uh, sort arrays, we will we will use a nested structure like this. That's not what we want to do right now. Here's a horse petting a cat. So you all get the perfect shuffle thing. I, I take the first half and, and the second half, and I'm going to interlace them. It's a perfect shuffle because it's it's perfectly interlaced, not perfectly randomized, uh, because they'll come out um, not using this code again, uh, but they'll come out in not this pattern. They'll come out in that pattern. Oh, jeez. Okay, there you go. So, um, so this is garbage code. That doesn't make any sort of sense. I still will need some counter moving the indexes between uh, 0, 1, and 2. And then another counter moving the indexes between 0, uh, 2, and 4. So that I still need to do. Um, and, and then I have another counter going 3, 4, 5. And matching that up with a one, three, five. So, uh, but we didn't need to do it uh, and make it so complicated with uh, with what I was doing before. Okay, so the answer starts by choosing a midpoint, which will go right here. And this is just the length, which is six, uh, which is six, 
divided by 2, which is 3. And this is going to be non-inclusive, so we're stopping as long as it's less than the midpoint. So, um, so it'll be the first 3. And then I create a temporary array. That way I can um, bounce values off of as I'm sorting this array. Um, and you'll see how this, that plays out. Okay, now we're going to make two counters. One counter is going to go uh, from here to here. The other counter is going to be from my new array. It's going to start from 0, go to 2, and then go to 4. So it's going to do the interlacing. Um, so k is the counter that goes from here to here, and then from there to there. Uh, and then n will be the counter that will hop in between. And look at how much easier this is. Okay, so I'm skipping the initialization for this for loop. So that's the first part of a for loop. I'm just putting a semicolon. So I skip right over this part because uh, normally you'd have an int k to zero right here. But because I'm defining it outside, I can skip it. And you'll you'll see why I define uh, define it outside. This is a, this is a clever solution. Um, and then I have the uh, uh, n defined up here, and it's going to be incremented by two as I loop through here. So we have k looping up until the midpoint and increasing by one. So it'll go zero, one, two, and then temp. It's going to start at zero. Um, and we're going to, inside this temporary, we're going to copy uh, values into the temporary. So when k is 0 and n is 0, it uh, goes down here. And then k, and then n will go up to, by 2, and k will go up by 1. Then you would get here, and then uh, k would go up another, and n would go up another 2, uh, and you'd get this guy. So here's where it gets clever. I, I start by resetting the new uh, counter to 1, so this spot right here. And again, I don't uh, do anything to k. k was defined uh, as 0 up here before this loop. And then it was increased up until the midpoint. And now I can just start it, pick it up where I left off because it's not scoped, it's not out of the scope. Uh, if I had created it inside this for loop, it would only exist inside the for loop. k would not be accessible outside of it. But because I defined k up here uh, uh, previously, then it's accessible to both inside this uh, loop and the same value is accessible uh, inside this loop as well now. So it will go 3, 4, 5, and uh, n will continue to go from uh, starting uh, back at 1. Uh, it will then go to uh, 3 and then 5. And OK, there you have it. Um, now, in the last video, I did explain something correctly that I, wa I want to touch on again, just in case uh, you missed it. And that was uh, with memory. So in my main method, I just want to start off by making the point that in my main method, when I call the shuffle method that we were just working on, and I pass it a list of numbers, uh, an array uh, of integers, when I pass it to the shuffle method, that this is actually a different uh, values variable than this is even though they're pointing to the same set of data. So let me explain that. I want to make sure you get that piece. Um, so right here uh, is the stack data and then the heap. So our memory, uh, our application memory is going to be split into these uh, two categories. All that's inside, if I go into the values uh, uh, variable inside my stack memory, if I uh, peek into that, all, all I would actually find is an address over in the heap memory where the data is actually kept. So this is just a pointer over towards um, where the values are kept and where all of the methods that uh, that such a variable, such a variable, uh, such a type of um, object uh, like an array, what it can do. So all of that is stored in the heap memory. And when I copy uh, 
the variable from values over into uh, shuffles of uh, variable of values what I'm doing is I'm just duplicating this and it's pointing at the same thing so that's how if I if shuffle modifies the data that's stored into uh, the heat memory over in values if shuffle changes that even though they're different in stack memory because they're pointing to the same collection of data over in heap that changes that shuffle uh, do are reflected back once shuffle shuts down that information is still uh, modified um, when when an, uh, the thread returns to main so at the very end I'll copy my uh, my shuffled array back into the original so I will uh, I will use k I don't have to say int k because k is already defined as an integer um, I've been using it uh, outside um, and so I'll just say I'll set it back to zero and I'll go until the end of the array and at each one I'll say hey values at k take um, the value at temp at k so it's just a one-to-one -one copy of each thing and that's how you perfect shuffle I started by making a temp array and noting the midpoint and then I started a counter uh, one that would uh, run here and one that was going to hop and so k and n both start at zero I then zoop uh, and loop right here straight up and hop n each time by two and copy um, uh, from uh, here into there and then from there into there and then from here into here and so on and then uh, I reset n back to one and I loop from here to here by picking up where k left off from here uh, and this is again because I defined it outside of any of the for loops so I can use it on both for loops and uh, I can even use it on the last for loop when I copy all of these values back into here. Alright, uh, sorry for making uh, a silly mistake, um, but hopefully uh, we've squared that away.